Hello everybody and welcome to this week's spelling lesson. We've got three words to learn this week. They're all on our spelling list because they're on the list of tricky words for years three and four on the national curriculum. But there are a few interesting spelling rules that we can incorporate into this lesson as well. Uh, we'll be thinking about homographs, we'll be thinking about words ending with the suffix ch, and we will be thinking about the ought sound spelt A-U-G-H-T. So let's get cracking. So today we're going to think about homographs. Homographs are words that are spelled the same, but they have different meanings. We've already looked at homophones in the past, quite a lot of homophones actually. Homophones are words that sound the same, but they're not spelled the same and they don't mean the same thing, such as here, H-E-A-R, and here, H-E-R-E. -E. I hear with my ear, H-E-A-R, and I am here at school, H-E-R-E. -E. Those are homophones. Today we're thinking about two words that are homographs, words that are spelled the same but have different meanings. Sometimes homographs sound the same as well, but they don't always, and the one we're learning for our spelling list today doesn't sound the same, depending on the meaning. Um, on the slide here, we've got some examples of homographs. You've got two versions of bat, both spelt the same, sound the same, but one is a creature and one is a sports piece of sports equipment. We've got letter, looks the same, we say it the same way, but it can either mean a letter of the alphabet or a letter that you post. And then we've got bow, which can be a bow in your hair, or bow, we can pronounce it a different way, but the spelling is exactly the same if you bow to the queen, okay? So the homographs that we're learning today are minute and minute. So it's one word that we're learning to spell on our spelling list, but it can have two very different meanings. It can be a minute of time, or it can be a minute thing, a very small thing. Okay, so depending on how you say the word and how you use the word in your sentence, that will determine which meaning. So, minute or minute, whichever you are thinking about, I want you to define it. Can you give me two definitions, one for each version of that word? Uh, there will be two different word classes depending on which version of the word you're thinking about. Um, maybe two sentences would be a good idea today. Think about the odd one out, trace the um, spelling of the word on your hand, and it is a word that is Latin in origin today, like a lot of the words we've been learning lately. So two definitions. Minute, a measurement of time equaling 60 seconds, or minute, something that is minute is very small. If you're thinking about a measurement of time, a minute, it's a noun. If you're using the word to mean something very small, it's an adjective, just the same as the word small is an adjective, a describing word. The odd one out in that list was gargantuan because gargantuan is an adjective that means really massive and huge, whereas the other three words were synonyms for the word minute, meaning very small, miniature, tiny and minuscule. My sentences were, please wait a minute before you eat the nettle soup. And my second sentence, the goblin carried a minute axe. And hopefully you've traced the word on your hand. Let's break the word down into two chunks. Visualize those two chunks, min, the easy part. And mm, if you're thinking about minute, it's quite tricky to spell that end word, U-T-E, that end section rather. If you're thinking of it as minute, it makes it a little easier because you can hear the split diagraph, ooh, in the ending of minute. So it might be easier to think of the spelling as minute, but know that you spell minute exactly the same way. Okay, take a picture with your brain of the two chunks. First section of the word, M-I-N, min, or mine depending on which one you're using. And the second part of the word, U-T-E, split diagraph, U-T-E, minute or minute. Copy the correct spelling. The second one. Finish the word. 
two letters missing. There we are, M-I-N-U-T-E, minute, minute. Write it backwards. Etunim. And finally, write it from memory. M-I-N-U-T-E. Congratulations, you can spell minute and you can spell minute. Okay, let's move on to our second word. For the little look at the spelling rule that forms part of this word, can you guess what these three words, what these three images are representing and what those words have in common? So the top one, top right, was creature. The middle word was adventure. And the bottom left word was nature. And what do those words have in common? They all end with the suffix ch, spelled T-U-R-E. Creature, adventure, nature. We have looked at this spelling rule before in a different spelling lesson. Okay, uh, when you add the suffix ch, T-U-R-E, to the end of a word, that particular word can become a noun. For example, mixture is a noun which is formed by adding the T-U-R-E, ch, suffix, to the end of the verb mix. Usually the suffix ch is only added to verbs. Let's look at the word that we're learning this week. The word is natural. So it comes from the root word nature, which in itself comes from a Latin word natura, meaning birth. So the root word is nature, but because we've added another suffix, al, to the end, we've dropped the e from t-u-r-e. But I wanted to show you that the word that, the, that natural originates from, the root word is nature, and that's why we've got that funny t-u-r in the middle making a ch-ch sound, which we might feel like spelling with a c-h or a t-c-h, and we mustn't, because it comes from the word nature, and so we have to use t-u-r in the middle of that word. We've dropped the e when we added the suffix al to turn into an adjective. Oh, I've just helped you with the next bit of the um, question. Can you define the word? Did you hear me tell you what word class it is? Put it in a sentence and tell me the odd one out. Trace it on your hand as well. Okay, so it is an adjective. I have forgotten to highlight it, but it's an adjective because if you're describing something as being natural, you're using a describing word, adjective. Definition, so there's two actually. Something that is natural has been made by nature, not by people or machines. And the second way that we might use the word natural is something that is natural is normal. And I've used it in that way in my sentence. It's natural to feel upset. That helps us with our odd word out as well, because I've used that definition of natural um, and I've picked three synonyms of it, normal, ordinary, typical. The one that is the odd one out is extraordinary because that's the opposite of normal and natural. That's out of the ordinary, isn't it? Extraordinary. One of our words that we'd been using in our um, goblin work this week. Right, hopefully you've traced the word on your hand. Let's move on to learning how to spell it. I've split this word into three chunks. na chur al na chur al First part of the word, please. That's right, N-A is your na. How are we writing that tricky middle section? Ch, T-U-R, coming from the suffix T-U-R-E, but we've dropped the E because we're adding al to the end. How do we write the end part? A-L, natural. Copy the correct spelling. There it is, the second one in. And finish the word for me. I've just given you the tricky middle part to add. N-A-T-U-R-A-L, natural. Write it backwards now. Larutan. And finally write the word from memory. N-A-T-U-R-A-L, very well done. Let's move on to our third and final word of the week. Okay. The word we're learning this week uses a tricky spelling rule. Now, the most we've got the sound ought in this word, and the most common spelling for the sound ought is O-R-T. 
as in these examples here next to the ear picture, sort, port, short, sport, report, export, they all use O-R-T, which is the normal way of spelling that sound ought. However, some words use O-U-G-H-T or A-U-G-H-T to spell that sound ought. All of those five letters making that little ought sound. Let's look at a few examples. So O-U-G-H-T you find in words like fought, brought, bought, thought, sought, okay? Um, lots of them are past participles when we put verbs into the past tense. Fought is the past tense of fight, brought is the past tense of bring, and so on. Then we've got A-U-G-H-T, which is the string of letters we're using in our word this week, which we'll move on to in a minute. And it is not uncommon if you look at all those words that use it. Caught, which is the past tense of catch. Uh, we've got naughty, which is our word of the week. We're moving on to haughty, if you're a little bit posh. Daughter, very important word. Slaughter, which means to kill. Okay. So lots of words do use that A-U-G-H-T, but it's not as common as O-R-T. So the word we're learning this week is naughty. Quite a common word, quite tricky to spell because of that A-U-G-H-T section in the middle. Um, the, the root word is naught, middle English word meaning possessing nothing. So if you're naughty, you're worth nothing. Think of it that way, I suppose. Um, define the word. Which word class? Put it in the sentence, find the odd one out, trace it on your hand. If you are naughty, you behave badly. It's an adjective, you're describing something or someone as being naughty. The naughty puppy chewed up the newspaper. Which is the odd one out? Well, disruptive, misbehaved and mischievous all are synonyms for naughty and obedient is an antonym. If you're obedient, you follow the rules and hopefully you've traced the word on your hands. Right, I've split the word into the beginning and the end sound and put that tricky chunk in the middle in blue, A-U-G-H-T, that's the tricky part. Take a picture with your brain, let's practice. Beginning sound, easy peasy. N. Now the tricky part please, how do we write the ought in naughty? A-U-G-H-T, and how do we make the E sound using one letter? That's right, it's just a Y on its own, naughty, naughty. Copy the correct spelling. Did you see it? Didn't get tricked by the O-U-G-H-T I threw in there. Well done, N-A-U-G-H-T-Y. Finish the word. N-A-U-G-H-T-Y. Can you write it backwards? Oh, I don't think I can even try and say this. Yutuguen. Write it from memory. N-A-U-G-H-T-Y. Well done, you've learnt to spell the word naughty. Okay, for your homework, put each of the spelling words into a sentence for me. It would be a good idea to write two sentences for minute and minute using each definition. So four sentences would be good. Um, then when you're reading, you can either spot one of our words, one of the three words, um, or you can look for any of those spelling rules that we've learned today, and there have been three of them, and uh, copy the sentence out where you find the word or words and take a picture of it. Tell me where you found it, what book, what magazine, or was it a website? You tell me. I like seeing those word detective, spelling detective um, exercises that you send me. Well done for joining me. Um, in this spelling lesson again this week and I look forward to seeing your work on Class Dojo. Bye bye for now.